So my role in the community has evolved. Um, I had cancer a few years ago, well, 10 years ago, and started advocating for that and quickly realized how intertwined my mental health was with my diagnosis. And I decided to come completely out with all my mental health challenges that I've lived with. And in that time, I also was, you know, advocating across the country. It wasn't just here locally. And I realized I wanted to work with a mission-driven company. So I, you know, been working with NAMI for two years now, uh, almost three actually. And it's important for me because I can educate myself on the statistics, the facts, and, you know, everything that goes on in the mental health community and be able to advocate the, the right way. I do come into the high schools to talk to students, small groups. I prefer to do about 20 to 30 students. It's more intimate. I share my story. Uh, I'm uncensored. They get the real version of it. I don't mix words. I also put into that facts, statistics, and solutions because that's really what these kids need. It's not a lecture, it's just me telling my story, which I think kids really can relate to because um, you know, they don't need another lecture. They need shared experiences. They need to sit in front of somebody who has been through it and survived because that gives them hope to realize, oh my God, I can get through this. The hard days are there, but I can get through this. I just need help. Mm -hmm. I started a suicide uh, prevention campaign called What Would You Miss? And the concept behind it is talking about suicide is incredibly difficult. To say the word, to ask for help, to ask your friend if they need help, all of that is hard. By simply asking someone what they would miss if they weren't here, makes them think about those very little things. I don't mean your family. I don't mean your job. I mean putting on a great pair of earrings and some super awesome lip gloss and just going out for the day. Like, I'd miss that. That's fantastic. But finding those little things that you would miss in life gives you a little bit of hope for the next day. And also, if a parent knows that their kid is struggling or doesn't know, which is really important, ask them, tell them, you know, I would miss the way you leave your clothes all over the floor if you weren't here. You know what it does? It validates that child's existence. It shows they are not a burden. And it, so, it shows that they would be missed if they weren't here because those are the three things you do not think happens when you're struggling. I'm a walking trigger and I need to know my triggers in order to be able to help myself. And I realized I was struggling again and a friend of mine's son had died by suicide and I asked her what she would miss about him. And she you know, told me everything and I said, no, no, tell me what you would miss about him. And what she would miss is the way that he left his milk cup on the counter, the way he wore his hat, I get a little emotional every time I say this, but the way he wore his hat backwards even though she didn't want him to, how he slammed the door every day when he left for school. Well, guess what, all that's gone now. And those are the things that we are yelling at our kids for. Those are the things that you might be yelling at your spouse for or your partner, whoever. And they think, you know what? They'd be better off without me because then they wouldn't yell. That is true. I, 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 I can tell you that from sheer experience. What depression does is it changes your thought process and makes you see things differently. You believe you are a burden. You believe everyone would be better off without you. That is your mind playing tricks on you. That is depression. Depression is an illness, it is not an emotion. It is a diagnosed illness. And just like cancer, the final stage is suicide. Although, unlike cancer, it is completely preventable. How do we prevent it? We talk. We talk. The only way to actually really prevent suicide is to normalize talking about suicide. Children as young as five years old are experiencing suicidal ideations. By eight, they've already thought about how they're going to do it. By 12, they have an attempt. So guess what? Starting in the high school with prevention and awareness, nope. You need to start in the elementary schools. If you think kids aren't thinking about it, talking about it, joking about it, we're naive. It needs to start in, the school, in, in elementary schools. It just does. Uh, my mother was murdered when I was one years old. And uh, because I was one, I became that beacon of hope. You know, the baby will make you laugh. Well, it, and I felt that pressure my whole life. And it's not my family's fault. They were, went through a trauma, but I felt like I always had to be happy. And I wasn't. I was completely and utterly depressed. I was sexually assaulted at 15, and a friend of mine killed himself a couple weeks after, and I couldn't take it anymore. And I was doing drugs, I was self-destructing, and I overdosed. Um, a friend of mine found me, thank God. 
uh, about three years later, you know, I was trying to pull myself back up. But you're a kid, you don't know how to do this. And, you know, I pretended to be the life of the party and no one saw what was going on. But the reality is, is when someone is depressed and having not just suicidal ideations, but a suicidal plan. Having suicidal thoughts is, are completely normal. Having the plan, that's serious, that's high risk. But you don't talk about that part. And I didn't know who to talk about. I was 16, 17 years old, you know. Uh, and a friend of mine overdosed on drugs, actually, my best friend. And I was supposed to be with him that night, and I really blamed myself for it. And uh, I tried to kill myself again. I overdosed again and realized I needed to get out of this town because I wasn't helping myself. I got away. Um, so where was that? In Syracuse. Yep. I grew up here. So I grew up in the city of Syracuse on the north side. Just, you know, it's so different than kids in suburbia. The, the issue is, just because it's different doesn't mean we don't have the same problems. You know, we're sitting here and we're talking about all of FM's problems. Guess what? They're at every single school. We are not the only ones. The problem is, administrators, and I totally understand this, they're, they're scared, they're fearful, and they're scared of failure. And I don't mean like failing because they're not gonna get their funding. They're failing the kids. You know what that's gotta feel like? We can sit here and we can rant and we can do all these interviews. Where's the solutions? Where are solutions that we can bring to the table and say, hey, let's try this. Let's add this to it. I don't see much of that. I just see a lot of people really upset, which is great right now. But what about two weeks when everyone's, you know, over it? That family's still grieving. His best friends are still grieving. And all those kids who are struggling are still struggling. Uh, one more point I would, I would like to make is, 130 people die every single day by suicide. 130 people. That's a huge number. That's massive. Suicide is the second leading cause of death from people the ages of 12 to 34. Second. We need to make those changes, but we need to give people solutions on how to get through it. We really, truly, truly do. Education. I mean, do you know how many parents really don't understand mental health? Because they've never gone through any mental health struggles. I understand that. But we need to educate those parents. What does depression mean? What does anxiety mean? What is bipolar? What is schizophrenia? Understanding all of that is the core to this. Having, you know, community meetings where an educator comes in and talks to the parents about how to talk to their kids, especially if you've never had these issues in your life. Educating the kids on being on these exact same things. They, what is depression? I, if I hear one more kid say, oh, I'm so depressed. Have you been diagnosed? No, nope. you're sad. You're sad. You can get through that. Depression is a diagnosis. It is, an, it is a condition, a health condition. We need to understand that. The kids don't understand that. So how can we expect them to go get help? We can't. And you know, they do need to know to go, who to go talk to. Who is that person for them to talk to? And what are they supposed to talk about? What are they supposed to tell this person? You know, it, I, I talk to a lot of parents who say to me, I don't know how to bring it up to my kid. I don't know how to do it. You're right. Because thinking about your child wanting to kill themselves is gut-wrenching. But you would 100% rather have an uncomfortable conversation with your child than listen to their eulogy. The minute you say that sentence to a parent, it changes for them. And that is why I created What Would You Miss? So parents could open up a door and have a conversation with their kids that's gentle, that doesn't say suicide all over it because that word is, you know, so taboo. And, you know, creating language that's safe. You know, we don't say committed suicide. We say die by suicide. Committed is a crime. You know, and the other thing is understanding depression. I started to say before how suicide is the last stage in depression. When you are suicidal, and this isn't just from research and my education, it's from my experience. You do not want to die. You don't. You 100% want that pain to end. It's an internal pain that can't be seen, and you wonder how can nobody see this pain because it's so incredibly intense, and it hurts so much physically, emotionally, everything. You want that to end, and you don't see a solution. The only solution that you see is death. When you can understand that that person doesn't really want to die, you can actually give them help. You know, uh, we talk a lot about the signs of suicide, right? You know, if they're giving away things, their grades drop, they start playing, stop playing sports, quit their job, spend tons of money, blah, blah, blah. Those are people that want help. Those are people that are saying, I'm right here, I'm right here, can you help me please? Without them saying it, that's fantastic, let's give them help. The people that are not saying it, 
they don't want help. They actually are ready to go. How do we help those people? Where do we find those people? By just having conversations every day with everybody, no matter who it is, no matter what you think they're going through. Because sooner or later, you're gonna talk to someone and they're gonna say, oh my God, I know exactly how you feel. You're right, I think I need to get some help. And they, you might not even have known it. They could have been, you know, top of their game, beautiful home, great cars, beautiful children, you know, th this great life that we all think is out there. Everyone puts their pants on the same way, one leg at a time. I've tried to jump into them, it just doesn't work. The point is, is that I've sat in a room with suicide survivors, lawyers, doctors, moms, drug addicts, homeless people, but they're all suicide survivors. Depression doesn't have a face. There's a lot we can do here for our kids. You know, we just need, we need to start younger. It's yeah. not in the high school. It's in elementary school. Talk to these kids, tell them stories. You know, they're scared. I, you know, I can remember being eight years old and wanting, wanting to die and wanting to kill myself and thinking of all these different ways to do it. And then being like, oh my God, I can't believe I just thought that. What's wrong with me? There must be something wrong with me. And you know, the problem with not having a mental health clinic and the kids not knowing who the resources are and all of that, what we're doing is sti we're stigma stigmatizing mental health. We're showing it that it's not a priority. However, if a kid breaks their foot, or if you break your foot at school, at work, they're gonna let you bring crutches in, they're gonna let you do all these things, people are gonna give you flowers. Um, when I was diagnosed with cancer, it was fantastic. People brought me casseroles, took my kids, all this stuff. Well, the year before, I hospitalized myself because I had a suicide plan. Not one person, not one person, not one. That's pretty powerful if you think about it. Mm -hmm. Mental health is just as important as physical health and they're intertwined.